Best three. Best three things of this movie. And let's start with Nathan. What's something you liked about <laughs> King Kong vs. Godzilla? Well, the first thing that I'm going to bring up is something that is sadly mostly absent in the American cut of this movie, and that is the satire. A lot of people oh. don't realize if they've grown up on the dubbed version, which did get re-edited as well with new scenes put into it and all of that, and that's a, that's a whole to-do. But right. this is a satire of commercialism, which, as you oh. watch this, you can tell. Oh, I didn't. But, okay, good to know. Well, but yeah, but that's why you have things like the the one character that we're introduced to plays drums. He's what's he yeah. doing at the beginning of the movie? He's playing drums. I think it's supposed to be a gum commercial. And yes, the that's reason right. Yeah, and then you have things in here like they're talking about well, the pharmaceutical company is trying to get Kong as basically a mascot that they, they bring him to Japan as a publicity stunt and that goes as well as you would expect <laughs> and then they start talking about things like how can we increase our ratings on television because tv was a new thing at, uh, in 1962 and oh, i never thought about that the, yeah that is so yes. funny because the whole idea yeah. of bringing king kong into this is it is like a commercial um a gimmick to sell more tickets yes. of this movie Yes, oh, in a oh, lot in a lot of ways, yeah. and well, and there's even one of the things that I love that's cu that they cut out of the American version is there's a meta joke in this because somebody says, "Oh, now we have Godzilla and Kong running around," and somebody somebody says they're going to make a movie about this. So I'm like, <laughs> 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 yeah, and then they keep talking about the idea of Godzilla versus King Kong having great marquee value, and they they yeah. treat the two of them meeting each other and fighting each other like it's a wrestling match. So that's it's yeah. Like, so it's yeah. You're, I'm just waiting for Godzilla and Kong to cut a promo. <laughs> <You know? Wow. laughs> at Mount Fuji at WrestleMania, Kong. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. You know, it's, a, it's yeah. It is all over the place. And the thing that, especially the commercial we have at the in the beginning, you know what? It honestly, kind of reminds me of, and that's RoboCop. Yeah, because oh. RoboCop was full of satire like that as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've heard that. I haven't seen it, but I've heard that. Oh, oh. You, don't, you don't like RoboCop? Oh my gosh, guys! Jeez, RoboCop's so great. <laughs> <laughs> You're mocking about not just being watch a, RoboCop. a Godzilla fan, Paul. I'm just get, dishing it back out. That's all. Okay. 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 Good. You know what's interesting though, uh, Nathan? That my first like sort of uh, goes off yours a bit. I just really found the advertising exec for what was it? Pharmaceuticals, uh, Pacific Pharmaceuticals, Pacific Pharmaceuticals. The guy with the mustache. I thought he just was Mr. Taco. So, Mr. Okay, Mr. Taco. Yeah, he was so I over the top. Was, I loved him, and just he was so like, oh, I we gotta get the, all he, the best. And yeah, it's just so good. He might be the he might be one of the best character in the whole movie to be honest. Yes. And Agreed. I actually had him on my uh, on my list of potential a uh, best 3. So I'm glad that you brought oh, him nice. up so we can actually oh, nice. talk about him a little bit. Yeah. But what you, you know, know what's interesting I was about to say real quick when I saw the American version they pronounced his name taco so much like a mexican taco that for some I reason know. i didn't make the connection when i watched the japanese version but the american version they call him taco i'm like is, is that his real name <laughs> i think that is actually how it is to be pronounced I, but, that is the only way i've ever heard the it way, pronounced. i guess maybe the way the japanese say it it, it sounds slightly different i don't know what it is but anyway it, mr it taco, probably does but it, it probably does but it's a little hard to hear but what's interesting is and i looked up the actor's name his name is ichiro arishima and he was actually considered to be basically the japanese charlie chaplin at the time oh really oh, wow. that's pretty cool did a lot yeah which you can definitely see in his performance he has a yeah. very old hollywood like yes. 1920s 1930s style mm -hmm. of acting mm -hmm. he's very over the top big gestures he's like yeah. uh, i don't know if you guys have seen the original king kong but he's basically carl denham in this except mm, I he's no. a, Okay, except he's a corporate executive and not a film director. Right. He reminded me of like a, a Warner Brothers Looney Tune cartoon almost. Yes, like, I could see that. Yeah. You know, which, pushing the 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 bomb to set off on the boat and and not. Oh no, that was an accident. That was an accident. 
And I love uh-huh. how I, I love how they're like, don't touch it. He's like, he starts freaking out, and then he accidentally falls on it. Yeah. <laughs> and you, and then it, it's it is kind of like Looney Tunes at that point because you're just sitting there going, Where's the kaboom? The <laughs> earth shattering kaboom. And then so nothing happens, and then they have to shoot the dynamite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To make it explode. So which ends where, up doing nothing anyway. So that's where Jaws got there. That's where Steven Spielberg got its their inspiration. I see. Yeah. King Kong Godzilla. Uh Paul, what was inspiring about this movie for you? Was it one of the characters or something else? And this is a little uh, thing of mine. I don't know why, but I, I I do know why. Where they make giant monsters move really slow, and I guess Stop that's motion? to make them lo- no, just like oh, I'm going to show its size by having it move slow. Oh yes, yes. So one that of the was, things that uh, I loved seeing in this is like coming from the the uh, the original Gojira film that we reviewed. Having a full-size Godzilla with his tail whapping around quickly, I thought was amazing. All right, let's get into this. Let's let's have some real fun with some kaiju's here. So that was fine. That was fun to see a lot of. Well, I wouldn't say live action, but uh, there's more action to it. These kaiju's. It's livelier. Yeah, it's livelier. Yes, yes that's which it. is uh, this movie was also a bit of a turning point for the franchise. Interestingly, this was the third film for both Godzilla and Kong. It was the yeah. first time both of them were seen in widescreen and the the, uh, the first time both of them were seen in color, which is really, int- uh, which is kind of crazy when you stop and think about it. But they yeah. were transitioning toward a slightly different style where they were making the monsters livelier and yeah. uh, you know, with how they move. I mean, when you watch the battle at the end, which will, you know, yeah. I'll bring up a little bit later, it's very kinetic. It's very energetic. It's, a big difference from what you know what you guys saw in Godzilla 54 but this was right. 8 years later so they had been progressing making some other films like you know Rodan the Mysterians Mothra and they were moving toward this as closer as their standard style for definitely for the 60s and even for a little while into the 70s yeah. well that's good to know i had no idea that that was there, though, I will say, Nathan, you totally uh, stepped on our trivial question for later. So thanks a lot. Awesome. <laughs> oh, job. darn it. You, you, you should get a prize. It. You Godzilla stomped on it. So that's fine. It's yeah. apropos. I appreciate that. But let's go back to you, Nathan, for something. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Jimmy. I know you're disappointed. <laughs> What's something else you enjoyed about this film, Nathan? Well, uh, I'm going to go with another thing that is unfortunately largely absent from the Americanized version, and that is the score. Mm. The score by Ofukube. Yes. Ofukube. <laughs> Ofukube. Yes. Yeah. Because unfortunately, in, when Universal brought the movie over in 1963 to the United States, they cut most of Ofukube's music out of it. I think they only That's left two tracks in, which part. was the. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, they uh, they they cut out all of his music except for the opening credits, the opening theme, and the uh, the Islanders, uh, yeah, you know, song to Kong. That's yeah. all they left in. But and then they replaced it with just a bunch of stock music from well, their previous movies. Yeah, most notably, interestingly enough. Music from Creature from the Black Lagoon, which when I, oh, nice. I when I watched, oh, okay. yeah, which when I watched Creature from the Black Lagoon, the whole time I was waiting for music I knew from this movie. That's funny. <laughs> to show up. King Kong gonna show up, and, and that's the movie that inspired God's the original Godzilla, right? Or no, 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 that's, Beast from Twenty Thousand Fathoms. That's right. Not, they're both in the sea, under the sea, down where it's wetter, down where it's better. Something. something Take it something. from you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, that goes right. I'm into not my a big second. fan of the Little Mermaid, so don't get me started. <laughs> no, that's oh. fine. We're, we're anyway, I had written then. down the the opening theme. I was not expecting that intense music right away, and that theme I thought was was great. It reminded me like I felt like I was in the Temple of Doom. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> with the chanting going on. Yeah, I thought the, the music it's- that it did keep was great. Yeah, it uh, that theme, uh, especially when you get to the island when the they start when the islanders start singing it is, it's 
uh, considered iconic in its own way. A, a lot of fans are actually hoping that it shows up in oh. Godzilla versus Kong, not that King Kong versus cool. Godzilla. Yeah, so we're talking about monkey lizard punchy punchy, not lizard monkey punchy punchy. Right. Okay. <laughs> Wow, Wait, where does that come from? Is that is that a meme or something? I've never heard this lizard monkey punchy punchy. I punchy, uh, punchy yeah, I, I may have heard it someplace, but I just started saying it in as oh, a funny okay. descriptor of the movie, okay. just because yeah. I think it's funny. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to meme it because Go I'm going to do an episode of my show on the on the new movie, and Sweet. I am going to meme that. Awesome. <laughs> there awesome, you go. Awesome. So yeah, I agree with you guys. The music was was great. I, I'm surprised to hear that they took it out of the uh, United States version because fits so well. But yeah. some something way way uh, something that has nothing to do with the music really that I liked was that I and maybe you can help me understand this because it's a like I don't really understand. I like that <laughs> King Kong is a lightning type Pokemon. I mean kaiju. Um, but, but why is he lightning? Why is he absorb lightning or can shoot lightning? What's the because, story behind that? Because in his <laughs> island, there is nothing for him to do except be struck by lightning and drink the berry juice. <laughs> yeah, okay. don't you know this? Oh, yeah. Do you want to know the real world reason this? why? Yes, I do. Because they had to come up with something, which I thought was brilliant. I'm like, how is well, this uh, monkey going to, sorry, this ape, because he doesn't have a tail. How is he <laughs> yes, gonna, uh, Veggie Tales told us this. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's where I remember that from. But I was wondering, how how is that even like a thing? Like, of course, Godzilla's going to roast him. How is How could they even fight? So I like yeah. that they gave him this electric uh, edge. Th to that's... Him. That's totally. basically what they did because, as I said b right before we went on the air, this is not the Kong from the 1933 film. This is a Toho reimagined version. He's much larger. The, he's almost as tall as Godzilla, whereas the original Kong was maybe 25 feet. He was so he wouldn't be. He would come up to Godzilla's ankle, basically, maybe his oh, knee wow. on yeah, a good yeah. day. But yeah, so uh, so he's larger, and they gave him that to help equalize things because Godzilla is basically a walking flamethrower. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's also, and I won't get into, it's a long, involved, sort of convoluted and kind of tragic story about how uh, you know how this movie got made. But this was, based to, uh, you know, the TLDR of it is that this was originally supposed to be uh, King Kong versus Frankenstein. Yeah. Really? Oh okay. yeah. So I think the electricity thing is a holdover because when oh, that script was getting chopped around sense. and it eventually yeah. got to Toho, Toho said, Hey, let's drop Frankenstein and put in Godzilla. Yeah. And we'll make I, it our 30th anniversary movie. So like they probably just said, well, you know, yeah, Frankenstein right. likes electricity. You know, give it to the ape. So, <laughs> and I was going to bring that up, but thank you for bringing that up because I was going to have people to check out the, your your Monster Island Film Vault podcast where you actually talk about the the oh, beginnings awesome. of that. Yes, yes. Uh, I believe oh, I could be getting my uh, my own episode numbers wrong. I think it's around episode five. I had yeah, John one LeMay. Of the earlier ones. <laughs> yeah, I had John LeMay on for that episode, and we talked about a pair of unmade uh, Godzilla, oh, well, un not just Godzilla, but unmade King Kong films that are related to this one. One being, God, you know, King Kong versus Frankenstein. The other one, because you would expect this, because this movie was a giant hit. Yeah. Uh, they did uh, try to, they did try to have a rematch back in the '60s. It really? got as far as a story treatment, but it never got made. Unfortunately, it's called Continuation: no, no. King Kong versus it's Godzilla. It's being made right now. Do you know? In twenty twenty. Well, this is actually <laughs> well, yeah. Godzilla versus Kong, not King Kong. Again, they changed the ape. <laughs> oh, really? Due to legal reasons. <laughs> See, here's here's the thing, guys. Both with this version and the last version, and this isn't in my dislikes or anything. So I'm gonna just place it here since it's apropos to what we're talking about. I almost feel like it would have been more interesting of a fight and a more of like a David versus Goliath type situation if you had King Kong be his like twenty five feet. And I don't know, you have a a little what? person actor in an ape suit or something. And he's like having <laughs> to crawl up Godzilla and like hit him and just and do all Godzilla this. And Godzilla steps What's on him? What's he going to do? <laughs> What's he going to do? Hope that he can gouge out his eyes yes. or something? <laughs> he's, well, he's smart and stuff. So he can no, you give him a good David was a lot taller compared to Goliath than that match. I, I, now have the, I now have this funny image in my head of... 
Kong with a sling and be like, yes, <laughs> and then trying to Give embed a rock or something. I mean, he throw. I mean, come on, dude. He does. He does Kong throw rock. throws rocks exactly. at Godzilla. Doesn't yeah. that count? Exactly. Yeah. I'm sure. I mean, and it could give him the lightning power still or something. I don't know. I just think that would have been a cool visual to have a small, uh, got a small King Kong versus this large Godzilla, and he still it, it is able to vanquish him. I think that. I think that would have been cool. Just, just saying, just saying. Anyway, kind of like ants, not ants, Bugs Life, where there's like a lot. No, wait, that's more than one. I don't yeah. understand how that would work. I don't Maybe know. Maybe if he's so small, he's a virus or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Merlin. All right. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand how that would work. Anyway, guys. <laughs> Uh, so those are the things we like. Let's get to our classic makers, though. The things we loved most about King Kong vs. Godzilla. And let's start with Paul this time. I liked... Uh, how long is this movie? It was uh, an hour, hour 20, uh, it's, hour 30, it's hour 40. It's not even 100 minutes. I think it, it's. I think you said 91. I think yeah, it's more like 98. Minutes. Yeah. So basically the last 10 minutes, maybe the last five minutes when they're actually fighting King Kong and Godzilla, that was my by far the, my favorite part when oh, okay, they're cool. actually wrestling and flipping each other around. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is what I came to see. So that was my classic very, maker, my favorite uh -huh. part. Very cool. Yeah. I wasn't nine off at all during that part. Uh, Nathan, what was your, <laughs> <laughs> what was your, uh, I was going to say Fire Rain, but no, what was your classic maker for God, <laughs> uh, King Kong? Paul beat me to it. Oh, really? yeah. Paul beat me to it. It's the final battle, man. Yeah. I, that's that's what we came to see, and it delivers. Yeah. Uh, this was, it, this, like I said, is a much livelier fight. The fight choreography in this is absolutely just bonkers yeah. when you stop and think <laughs> about it. I mean, if you see the first sequel to Godzilla, to the original Godzilla, it's called Godzilla Raids Again. That this is nothing by comparison. They tried to make it the, that first battle you know, in that movie. They tried to make it look more like a pair of animals mm. trying to kill each other. And this one, they're like, you know, we're not. We're, no, this is a pro wrestling match, and yeah. we're treating it like a pro wrestling match. So you've got yeah. you've, you've got Kong judo flip like shoulder throwing <laughs> yeah. and judo flipping Godzilla. It is ridiculous. And you want to know how hardcore those suit actors were? Haworo Nakajima, who was in that Godzilla suit when Kong flips him. Yeah. Normally, I think later on they started when they would do crazy flips like that, they would use empty suits. Nakajima, for whatever reason, was still in that suit when they did that. Oh, it is wow. absolutely insane. That yeah. is how hardcore they were. That's do crazy. not. I, anytime somebody tries to mock suitmation, I get angry because like you oh, do yeah. not realize how difficult it is to do this and how much of an art form it is. It is. You know, I dare you to go you know, to put on a hundred pounds of you know of padding and rubber and see how long you can walk around on a miniature set. Go ahead. No, try. It. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. I'll try it and I will dominate. Um. But yeah, that is impressive that their their the willingness and the artistry and the uh, persistence, determination, all those awesome words that definitely apply yeah. to those suit actors the, for sure. Well, and the thing that makes it even better is that we get multiple kinds of special effects. Here we get the miniatures, we get the suits, we even get mm -hmm. it, it only happens for one shot for a couple of seconds when we get stop motion. Which was really cool. And the here's the nutty thing, and I'm gonna make sure I bring this up because I really want to dispel this. There is an urban legend that has circulated for nearly 60 years with this movie, and there oh, are yes. still people who believe it. There no, is only true. one ending. There yeah. is only one ending. There are not, People thought that the Japanese version and the American version had two different endings, where in the American version, it's Kong who wins, and in the Japanese version, it's Godzilla. It's not. It's the same ending in both of them. Yep. The thing that's confusing is that... Despite the fact that the ending is the same, nobody can agree on who actually wins. Not even Toho. Toho keeps what? changing their mind. Yeah, King for Kong years they said, away, if, "So it's obvious." That's what I mean. King Kong wins. I mean, except Godzilla some people say, except some people say that's Kong retreating. No, so, he's going back home I, because Godzilla never surfaces. There's the fight's over. Yeah, he's down. But Godzilla can, but Godzilla can hide in water because he's amphibious. So I mean, people just go nuts with it. Toho, I think, for years said King Kong won. Now they're trying to say it's a tie. I'm like, I, 
okay, I, I, I've given up. All right. Yeah. It's, I, I'm sorry. As much as I love Godzilla, I got to give the W to, to Kong in this yeah, one. Yeah, It's pretty obvious to me too. I mean, I already mentioned I'm on team Godzilla, but it's obvious to me that King Kong won this one. Oh, you know, and you can't oh. forget the, you know, the, the tree. I mean, <laughs> I hope that gets referenced in the new movie. I so, really do. So speaking you of new movie a tree, did what you attempt with the tree? Hey, hey, yeah, Kong yeah, uproots a tree and tries to stuff it down his throat. It's great. And, oh, but yeah, I think I saw that. But I was like, that's weird. Obviously, you're not going to get that past the uh, past the rubber part. Like it looked like it wasn't going down very deep. And well, to Godzilla's mouth. If he had a, a more time, he would have shoved it down there. You well, know? he so should have like, maybe make if it, he make was a popsicle stick. You know what? Maybe him. if he was a small guy, a uh, small King Kong, and took just like a God, like a, a small, good a popsicle. Like, well, listen, got one of the bones from the Rancor pit, much like Luke Skywalker, and just put it in, <laughs> like prop his jaw open, and then and then lightning bolt like again force powers lightning bolt right into his mouth. <laughs> Down into his gullet with exploded Godzilla, and you still get the same ending. Hold it. You, hold it. <laughs> Are you promoting King Kong to Emperor Kong? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, here? I guess. Yeah, Sith Am Emperor I? because yeah. of the oh, lightning. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Exactly. You, uh, Jimmy approves of this, uh, apparently. I would think so, so given his, <laughs> his sound affinity there. Um, but regardless, guys, that has nothing to do with my. Classic Maker. My Classic Maker is actually the first fight I think you both were alluding to with the octopus kaiju. And I just thought it was so amazing. That Udaku! Was, I was like, whoa, how are they doing this? Like, I really... Udaku, I, excuse me. I eventually realized, oh, this must be a real octopus or something because it's just it, too... Move, the movements are too fluid and everything. And it yes. sounded the yeah. way it was... I was had headphones on. It sounded like that... Oh, yes. it was yeah. gross. Yes. It, they, that that was so is, well uh, that was a real octopus. Now, uh, when they got, I think they used a, a, a prop when the, the Kong suit actor was actually interacting with it, obviously. Of but you so. want to know a funny story? <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, my gosh. They used three octopuses, octopi, whichever plural you prefer, when they were filming this movie. Story has it that A.G. Subaraya, who was the special effects director, when they were finished filming for the day with one of them, <laughs> had Calamari. one of those octopuses uh, cooked and he ate it for dinner. So, nice. <laughs> well, you don't want to go to Calamari. <laughs> so wow. they can't put the little disclaimer at the end of the movie that says no animals were <laughs> harmed in the filming of this motion picture because it was definitely harmed. Did but how many people can say that they literally ate one of their special effects? Wow. Not many. Though, would, did they even have that issue back then? I don't think they did back in the 60s. Probably not. Oh, oh yeah. No, oh, no they didn't. Uh, well, I don't think they did, but they could never get away with that now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Or the blackface. But anyway, let's hope they oh, don't. Oh, of the <laughs> Islanders? Let's, yeah. I'm yeah, like, let's hope cancel very, culture doesn't these, get a hold of this. These Islanders look very Japanese, but okay, whatever. I'll go, I'll <laughs> go with it. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah, so I just really appreciate that they used a practical effect like that, even though the, I mean, the blue screen wasn't great. It could tell when it was like villagers filmed on something else versus the, versus that versus Godzilla or versus King Kong or, or when the octopus had like this, like a toy figure in its tentacles and stuff. But all that aside for the time, I was impressed with it. So, and so that was my classic maker for King Kong versus Godzilla. 